you're doing the greeting, right? Okay. Are you doing the greeting? Grace and peace in the name of Jesus Christ, in whose name we gather to worship God. I'm Reverend Barbara Weekel, and we are the people of Memorial United Methodist Church in West Carrollton, Ohio. Thank you for joining us. Today we observe World Communion Sunday, a reminder that the community of faith includes persons from many nations and ethnicities, a promise that we become one through the sacrament of Holy Communion and an opportunity to consider our role in the global church of many denominations. Later we will observe the sacrament. If you wish to participate, you may want to provide some bread and juice at this time. Let us prepare ourselves to worship God. Supposedly, Abraham Lincoln coined the phrase, you can fool all of the people some of the time and some of the people all of the time, but you cannot fool all of the people all of the time. Or maybe it was P.T. Barnum who said it, but he left off the final phrase. Others amend the statement to say, you can fool all of the people too much of the time. As Jesus confronts the temple leaders during the final week of his life, there's a showdown. When a showdown is inevitable, the crowd plays an important part in the decisions made by the religious leaders. They, they fear that the crowd believes Jesus is a prophet, forcing a delay in their actions against Jesus until they can gather a crowd to shout, crucify him. In typical Jesus' fashion, he responds to their threats by telling stories to the crowd within the hearing of his opponents. Where will we stand when we consider the story Jesus tells today? Will we stand with the religious leaders, among, maybe among the crowds, or we find ourselves becoming the body of Christ, prepared to be sacrificed for Christ's sake?
Please join me in the affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, and cruci was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our gospel lesson this morning comes from the chapter, 21st chapter of Matthew's gospel. Today I will be reading from the message, a translation by Eugene Peterson. Jesus is speaking. Here's another story. Listen closely. There was once a man, a wealthy farmer, who, who planted a vineyard. He fenced it, dug a wine press, put up a watchtower, and then he turned it over to the farmhands and went off on a trip. When it was time to harvest the grapes, he sent his servants back to collect his profits. The farmhands grabbed the first servant and beat him up. The next one they murdered. They threw stones at the third, but he got away. The owner tried again, sending more servants. They got the same treatment. The owner was at the end of his rope. He decided to send his son. Surely, he thought, they will respect my son. But when the farmhands saw the son arrive, they rubbed their hands in greed. This is the heir. Let's kill him and have it for ourselves. They grabbed him, threw him out, and killed him. Now, when the owner of the vineyard arrives home from his trip, what do you think he will do to the farmhands? He'll kill them, a rotten bunch and good riddance, they answered. Then he'll assign the vineyard to farmhands who will hand over the prophets when it's time. Jesus said, right, and you can read it for yourselves in your Bibles. The stone is the, ma the masons threw out is now the cornerstone. This is God's work. We rub our eyes and we can hardly believe it. This is the way it is with you. God's kingdom will be taken back from you and handed over to a people who will live out a kingdom life. Whoever stumbles on this stone gets shattered. Whoever the stone falls on gets smashed. When the religious leaders heard this story, they knew it was aimed at them. They wanted to arrest Jesus and put him in jail. But intimidated by public opinion, they held back. Most people held him to be a prophet of God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In 1978, without any expertise in art or business, I opened a do-it-yourself picture frame shop in downtown South Town Center. Our house was collateral for our SBA loan. I soon discovered that the franchisor had no experience in supporting franchisees, and I was on my own to succeed or fail. A high percentage of small businesses fail in the first year. After five years, only about 1% are still in business. And we were one of the few who made it. 
And we even made a profit some years. I have absolutely no explanation as to how that happened. I suspect, however, that what saved us were the relationships we built with our customers who returned on a regular basis and also recommended us to their friends. We also provided excellent products and service at an affordable price. When I entered seminary, it became apparent that I could no longer manage the business, and so I counted on my well-trained and excellent staff to continue the operation. But over time, the staff became less reliable. They cut corners and perhaps failed to relate to the customers in the way that I would have. They may have resented my departure, and they may have felt they deserved higher wages. Eventually, it became clear that the business was no longer self-sustaining and needed to close. When workers believe they are working hard and the owner is contributing nothing to the success of the business, resentment and entitlement can lead to hard feelings and even harsh actions. Disclaimer, I am not talking about the union movement that seeks fair wages and working conditions for employees who seldom receive a fair share of the profits. Those concerns are appropriate responses to the workplace. As we see in the story Jesus told, the tenant farmers forgot that without the owner's investment, there would be no vineyard to provide for their needs. They also forgot, or perhaps chose to ignore, their agreement made with the owner. It happens. And sometimes it even happens when the owner is God and the tenant is a religious institution. No doubt the religion leaders who listened to Jesus that day got the message. Jesus was talking about them. And they were ready to shut him down. After all, they had been running the show for quite a few generations without God's immediate intervention. Well, when, when we've arranged things to our satisfaction, and mostly they had, who needs a direct messenger from the boss to remind us there is a payment due, an obligation to be met? Whether that message comes from prophets or even the owner's son, we're not always willing to listen and do what's right. But within the crowd, the ones who followed Jesus to hear what he had to say were quite a few who thought he was a prophet. And the religious leaders couldn't afford to lose the crowd's approval and the crowd's contributions to the temple treasury. Now, the religious leaders didn't give up on their plans. It was too late for that. But they were forced to do their dirty work in the dark of night, and only after recruiting a crowd of their own that would shout, crucify him. If only. If only that were the last time Jesus' story of the vineyard owner needed to be told to the crowds for religious leaders to overhear. Now, the church has often insisted that this story applied only to the Jewish tradition and used this story to justify anti-Semitism and Jewish persecution. God had indeed thrown out the wicked tenants and given the vineyard to others. But what if the story isn't just about the chosen people of Israel, but about any group that forgets they are tenants and not owners? 
when the church forgets its obligation to the owner, when we begin to believe we're in charge, we are as likely to go astray as my employees at the frame shop. We forget to build the relationships with our customers. We get sloppy in preparing the products. We overspend or miscalculate costs. And soon the cash register isn't ringing as often. To many outsiders, the Church of Jesus Christ has become an unappealing option. Divisions, bickering, unjust resolutions, judgmentalism, and, and even criminal behavior have tarnished our public appearance. And sadly, those behaviors also do damage within the body of Christ called the church. Charles Wesley's words from 1749 still apply. Fightings without and fears within. Too often, we are more concerned about our survival as an institution than we are about living a kingdom life. When being introduced to my first congregation as a student pastor, the committee wanted to be sure that I was the kind of person who would bring new people and their money to the congregation. I suspect that same hope is an open or hidden agenda for almost every congregation these days. Fortunately, District Superintendent Reverend Charles Hill corrected them. He said, the job of Savior has already been taken and filled by Jesus Christ, and no pastor is sent to save the church. Today's crowds share many characteristics with the crowds to whom Jesus spoke in first century Palestine. The people come to receive a word of hope, an opportunity for healing, instruction in how to live a good life that satisfies the deepest longings of their hearts. They do not come to be judged or made to feel unworthy, nor to be punished, ignored, were shunned. They want a relationship with God, but they also want a loving, honest relationship with God's people. The crowds long for a place where their presence matters to someone, where their presence brings joy to them and to the whole assembly. They want to work in the vineyard and reproduce fruit that honors God, fruit that provides for their needs. We, the church, must decide if we are religious leaders of an institution hoping to fool the crowds into following our leadership, maintaining a status quo that keeps us in control, or if we are the body of Christ, living in a kingdom where love reigns, where justice rolls down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. The crowds are watching. Who shall we be? Shall we become the body of Christ, willing to be sacrificed for the sake of the world? Or will we be greedy tenant farmers, forgetting our covenant relationship with the one who created the vineyard? The answer we choose will make all the difference in the world. Amen. Try.
Once again, thanks to special thanks to our tech team who are working diligently to provide our services to the community. Um, Kathy Garrison, Chad Jones, and Jack Barter are on duty today. Thanks as well to Debbie Hildreth, to Mary Jane and Don Owsley, and to Kathy Barter and Janine e Jeanette Eakins for serving as our worship leaders, and they're doing a great job. Amen? Amen. We are learning each week about how to do a better job of virtual connecting Thank you for your patience and understanding. Remember, if you need assistance in connecting, please let us know and we'll find someone to help. Please note that we also have a phone-in and online opportunity for Bible study Wednesday afternoons from 1 to 2 p.m. Thanks to Jane Berner, who keeps us updated on prayer requests and good news from our congregation. And I want to say a special thank you to those who are giving to UMCOR for disaster relief and for those who are supporting United Methodists around the world through the World Communion Offering. These gifts will be forwarded to the appropriate agencies as soon as possible to keep this essential work moving forward. Because of many public health officials, including public officials, including the president, being infected by COVID-19. It is essential that we all do what we can to keep one another safe. That includes regular hand washing, mask wearing, maintaining safe physical distances, and staying home as much as possible. These practices are not what we prefer, but they are the best ways to protect those whom we love. Thank you for continuing to persevere in this time, in this place. Let us enter now into a time of intentional prayer. Let us pray. Tender and compassionate God who is generous to us in so many ways, but particularly in hearing and responding to the deep concerns of our hearts and lives. We ask your blessing upon the people and circumstances we bring to you. We pray for all who are ill, injured, and suffering from chronic conditions, but most particularly for those whose lives are being compromised by the pandemics of coronavirus and violence. Be with those who wait, those who grieve, and family members and health professionals who care for your beloved children, whom we name before you. God of all mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for the world, for creation that is endangered by abuse and overuse and human activity, for governments and institutions that they might protect and respect all citizens, that they might operate with integrity and wisdom that self-serving practices be replaced with efforts that provide for our clients, workers, and communities. 
and for brave voices to speak truth to power. God of all mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for people and places that are endangered by storms, floods, fires, and other natural disasters. For homes and communities overwhelmed with injustice and violence. For persons who have no access to the basic needs to sustain life. And for all who are affected by addictions to dangerous substances and behaviors. God of all mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for the church universal for your people in all times and all places, that we might become the body of Christ for the world. We pray for Bishop Palmer and Superintendent Roper, for Pope Francis and all who lead your people. We pray for our brothers and sisters whose lives and words share good news wherever they might be in the world. We pray for the mission members and ministries of this congregation and for the communities in which we live and serve. God of all mercy, hear our prayers. We pray in the community, community of the saints who have gone before us and in anticipation of the saints who will inherit from us. Amen. Our baptismal vows remind us that we unite with a church that Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. Today we remember and honor that commitment as we share fellowship at Christ's table, which is open to all who wish to partake. No one is rejected by God. Let us give thanks that we are among the guests who receive this gift of love provided for the world. The Lord be with us wherever we find ourselves this day. As we unite our hearts and minds around this table of grace, let us give thanks to God. 
It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. When you began to create and bring order to chaos, you formed us in your image and breathed life into us by your spirit. You claimed us as your own and made covenant to be our God. And though we have strayed from your ways to follow our own urges, you remain faithful to the covenant and welcome us joyfully when we return to you. And so with your people on earth and with all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. He welcomed children. He spoke to women. He ate with sinners and he preached good news to those who were poor. In his life, we see the fullness of your love for us. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night before he gave himself up for us, he gathered around the table with his dearest companions for one final time. He took bread and he gave thanks to you. And then he broke the bread and he gave it to them and he said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and he blessed it. And then he gave it to them and he said, drink from this, all of you, for this is the cup of the new covenant, my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink this, do it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, make us one with each other, and make us one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, we are bold to pray using the words Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Wheat, scattered and grown in many fields, is gathered and formed into one loaf, just as we who are many are formed into the body of Christ. The bread we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The fruit of many vines is pressed into the one wine of forgiveness. The cup over we, which we give thanks is a sharing in the, body, in the blood of Christ. 
The gifts we share are holy things for holy people. Taste and see that God is good. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Bind us into one bo holy body through your love with Christ as our head. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your holy of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. may we be each day signs of God's love for the world as we live kingdom lives of grace and service in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>